When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Does it get better than never getting lost? Does it get better than not parallel parking yourself? Alexa, ask Smart Feed to feed the dog. Does it get better than feeding your dog from 50 miles away? Yes, it does. At Buick, we see a future that's even better because the life-enhancing innovations you've never even dreamed of, Buick is dreaming of them every day. Lily, what up? What's up, baby? Man, I'm just chilling. Just chilling. <laughs> here, here, out, here in Los Angeles, you know, hanging out. So we've been having some great interviews, and yeah. I, I interviewed your girl, uh, Damaris Lewis. But it started off quite interesting. Okay. So we sitting here, we waiting for her to get, up, get here. Uh, they had a little situation wherever she was staying, so she was a little late. So I, as always, I'm in here rocking, I'm dancing, I'm doing my thing. Right. And unbeknownst to us, she knocking at the door. <laughs> she knocked my 10, 12 times. Okay. But, it, but she's like, yeah, he's probably on the other side of this door dancing. So this happened. Um, uh, this happened. So we, we rocking, we doing our thing. And then all of a sudden, when uh, we open the door, we open the door. Um, this is how your girl um responds soon as the door was open home turn the volume up here because we were getting it in <laughs> so hard <laughs> that's so hard yeah. she had to come in that way you can't, said that's all you her. Can't, you can't. When, when it comes to Damaris, you just, you know, you just kind of know, like, when music starts playing, she has to, she has to dance or she just feels it in a way that, you know, you just can't, you can't really put it in the world. Well, see, that's how I am. Right. And that's why she said, she was right. like, you know, I'm not going to get mad that I answer the door. She said, because, um, he's probably on the other side dancing, yeah. knowing him. She probably heard the music. Because that's how we first <laughs> met. Okay. On the dance floor in New York at the Alvin Ailey benefit. Oh, wow. Okay. And I was like, she's like, 
Oh, yo, oh, you just, I said, oh, no. I said, I don't come to events and stand the hell around right. uh, and drink and just look at people. I said, no, no, no. I said, I believe in sweating. Yes. I said, I, I said, I, I believe yeah. in, I said, I'm talking about, I want to get to the crib at the end of the night and peel the clothes off and they got to hang dry for 48 hours. Yeah. That, that level, that, that's my thing. I saw that at, at an Essence one time. Oh, yeah. I saw you at Essence one time, and I don't think you, the whole time I was there, I don't think you stopped. Oh, no, I ain't, I, I, like, I don't understand the <laughs> concept. Like, Mary's on stage, I'm dancing. No, I, no on, I, on time I will stop. Now, when Mary's on stage, there is a point when I will stop. Okay. It's when that old Mary, when she was single, come out. Them depressing ass songs. Uh, and that that's when I like, yeah. y'all need some water, I'm, I'm gonna go. Cause I, yeah. I, sister love Mary J. Block, and I love Mary. Yeah. I really love married Mary. Got Just it. fine, uh, like upbeat, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. all them, it's just like, no, it's the pain. I was like, Roland gonna get the drinks. I, okay. I, 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 I can't deal with that Mary, okay? Okay. With sister's love, <clears throat> but yeah. it's, it's, a, it, it's too much heartache. I, Did I, you see I, her documentary? Um, I didn't see the documentary. I wasn't a time during a morning show. Okay. Where on a cruise, where in okay. the middle of the cruise, Mary sat down on the stage and started expounding on what she was going through in the divorce. Ooh. I'm just saying a lot of us brothers left to go to the casino <laughs> because <laughs> it was it was yeah. I mean like that was it was yeah. it was a therapy session. Yeah. And one bro was like, "Hey, I ain't come here." Yeah. You know. To, to, to have, you know, the, the therapy conversation, my, I came here to party. Yeah. Uh, and it was, so, like I said, I love me some Mary J. Blige. Right. But that, that there's a certain point, like, at the beginning of the show, right. killing. Right. She get to that middle of that concert, when that old Mary, that, the Mary the black women really, really love. Yeah. Rolling go get the drinks. Yeah. You I don't want to be guilty by association. No, it's just, it's just yeah. I, you know, I, I just, I mean, I get pain. Yeah. I'm just not trying to feel it. Right. Got it. Got it. No, that, that makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. yeah. I'm just, I'm, yeah, because, you know, I mean, you know how it is. It's some people, it's like you might have some friends, you know, they, they want to lay something on you. Kind of like, okay, so like this, but, <laughs> bro. <laughs> uh. Okay, yeah. It was like yeah. that, it was like that scene, what well, the scene in a thing like a man. See so thing like a man when well, y'all all sitting around and everybody woman everybody having drama and everything mm -hmm. and uh, y y folks had broken up and Kevin Hart trying to get back uh, with the wife and Gary yeah. Owen like hey I'm good my relationship yeah. and uh, then just disintegrated because yeah. it was like all this heavy stuff yeah we ain't trying to do all that we you know I mean we there's a there's a time and place for it I agree this is a concert okay got it we got the party yeah we got to get this I get it I get it. So okay. speaking of that, okay. So so who for you is an artist that would just whether you at a concert or listen listen to music that would just cause you just to forget where you are, who you with, and you just get it in. You just might just start just grooving right there. Don't even matter. You in the car. You at the stoplight, and you just oh um wow. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so I'd have to say just off the dome. That I'm sure there's somebody who I'm, I'm going to forget. Don't worry about it. Just so you know. But off the dome, new edition. Oh, okay. Because it takes me back to that time right. of nostalgia when I was like a kid and I was working on the dance move. Right. In the, you know, in the basement. Right, right. You know what I mean? With my friends and stuff. And, and I recently have been teaching my kids uh, about new edition. See, thank you. You know what I mean? Here. I'm, te I'm teaching my kids. And here's an example of what I'm talking about. So the other day, my, my, my daughter says, Daddy, can you play our jam? She's five. I said, uh, what, what's our jam? Because <laughs> I wasn't sure which right, one she was right. talking about. Um, and she was like, uh, I, 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 I wanted to take you home. And I was like, by Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam? And she said, yes, Boom. sustain. Dad. I said, I'm doing well. That's what I'm saying. I'm parent of the year. Dude, my that's children have, un they understand real music. This is great. I, it, it, I keep telling people, yeah. if there is yeah. somebody 
who is a millennial or Gen Z. Yeah. And there are certain movies they have not seen. Sorry as Anthony with glory. <laughs> That's like me That's and Henry, like not knowing math. Me and Henry sitting here, <laughs> we just talking. I say Lord, Lord, oh, Lord, Lord. He like, what's that? Ah, oh. dog. Henry oh. like, dude. Ah, oh. Henry the fifty fourth. Fifty fourth. He goes, what's fifty fourth? What? Mandatory. Mandatory. Dog. That's what I'm saying. Mandatory. That's an indictment on your parents. It is. It, that's mandatory. You don't know Lady Marmalade. You don't know I Love Music. Wow. You don't know. Uh, 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 you don't know anything by Al Green. If your ass don't know any Betty Wright, I can't get mad at the kid. Yeah. I gotta get mad at mom and daddy. You do. I gotta get mad at some aunts and uncles, some grandparents. Yeah. Yeah. Cause see, the problem is, is they get their asses in the car. And they got their own music. Yeah. My nieces got it. I said, uh-uh. Headphones off. This is my shit. Yeah. And so then they were like, uh, I want to listen to that. Cool. Yeah. You gonna listen to it. Because yeah. it's gonna overpower your little earbuds. No, my kid, I'm shocked, man. My kids actually, you know, they love like if it isn't love and candy oh, that's girl what... and you but, know, but that's because they you love played all that. it. Well, no, I introduced I introduced. No, no, but that's to, my yeah. point. My point is, yeah. there are a lot of parents now who won't. They just listen to whatever their kids are. Right. Yeah. And I'm going, they ain't paying no bills. But here's the thing. They I, don't control the radio. I, I, think you're, I think you're right. And I think the, the other problem is too many parents nowadays want to be their kids' friends. I, instead of being their parents, right? So, that, so have, that's have, cool. Have but, you had that conversation with your kids? I ain't your friend. Yeah, like, you know. I have I've had that conversation. I, I don't I don't I wasn't raised that way. Both my parents were in the military, so I didn't have friends. I had parents. Boom. So so I I had parents, and so I I kind of and I understand you can't always parent the exact same way as you were parented, and so forth and so on. I get all Man, of that. You can, but I get uh, all. That. <laughs> but what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, times have changed. I get it, and and all I'm saying is, you know, I still think there's a certain amount of um, a certain need rather for having, you know, more of an authority figure than a friend. 100%. And being able to teach them that dynamic is important. So have you, have you instilled the fear into your children? Absolutely. Like, like, so you have a clearly established look. Yeah. And tone. So <clears throat> the good thing about what I do is, <laughs> is that I'm able to play dark, disturbed characters. Right. So I have, I am, you know, my kids are eight and five. I've never had to hit them. Okay. I will go. I know I didn't go that long. To a dark I place. Ass whooped. <laughs> I mean, I led my family yeah. in ass whoopings. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I don't even know who in second. Yeah. My it's kid, five of us. <laughs> yeah, I got them too. I got them too. I got them too. I definitely did. Um, and then what happened was, so my kids started going, my first, my first kids started going to private school. And they had a very strict rule that, you right. know, if you hit somebody, you're out. And I was like, and you can't get the money back? And they were like, no. I was like, <laughs> and you were like, and I was like this. Listen. Well, see, what we're not going to do is hit at home and teach them that. <laughs> so, so, so I kind of fell into not hitting my kids by default almost. Um, but like, yeah. you like, oh, y'all ain't fuck up the problem. Yeah, so listen, what you're not going to do is hit somebody at like, school. We can't you know get the money back? <laughs> we can't get the money back. No. You're not going to hit somebody. You're going to find another way to get them back. Right, right. You got to be strategic. Right. right? We got to teach them another way. You the hell Whatever. Out. You know what I mean? Just, you got to use your intelligence and get at them. You know what I mean? Hit them like Claire Huxtable would. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I say it. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, it was very important to me to, to, to make sure that they understood that. And, you know, I had to also be very careful because my wife grew up in kind of a, a, a traumatic situation. Right. So I didn't, you know, I had to, I couldn't. You had to navigate. Yeah, I had to, you had to be kind of careful about that because she was, what she had experienced was straight abuse. And I didn't want that to come across. And, and I you probably were trying to explain, you like, no, that's, that's, that's a black family. That yeah, was just it's how just, we, it's just, it's just it's different. Was, but, right. I, but, but what people don't talk about all the time is how, there's that blend of discipline right. and love. Yeah. Right? Like you could go to a ball game with your father and realize 
I'm building a relationship. We have a friendship. Right. We love each other. And so right. there's both. When you're in a situation where there's only abuse. Right, right. And your parents can't stand you. That that yeah, is so I, and that's, that's, a, that's a whole that's different. A, that's a whole different level. I mean, yeah. I, one day on one day on Twitter, I was uh, we were engaged in this <laughs> this conversation. Is me and Teray were battling, and he was like, "Oh, it is barbaric. You're talking about uh, beating children, spanking children." And so I said, "All right." I said, "So who's on hashtag Team Teray, and who's on <laughs> hashtag Team Whip That Ass?" <laughs> like I'm not lying. For forty eight hours right black people were telling some of the craziest hashtag team whip that ass stories right that were unbelievably hilarious but i was like damn yeah there was like it, yeah. it like so henry henry over there Henry over there switching henry got a story his dad said i need to cut that grass right when henry decided to oversleep right so Henry wakes up to the sound of a lawnmower. Mm. And he tried to rush out. No, no, mm, peace, mm, take your ass back in, go on to sleep. You know what I said? Henry ended up being thrown through a window. <laughs> <laughs> he just mom was like, Penny, Penny, you gonna kill my baby! He like, his ass gonna remember to cut this goddamn grass next time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, okay, again, as I said, different generations, different times. We can evolve past that, I think. I mean, he said through That's extreme. Ass. He threw him through yeah, a window. That's, extreme. that's like Axel Foley. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. Like, you know, that's like, what is that? Trespassing. You know what I'm saying? He said, threw him through. He I was threw like, him through a fucking window. Like, that's, 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 right. that's, that's how you treat somebody who's trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But here's the, but here's, and here's the other side of that. Did Henry ever forget to cut that grass? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, does Henry think his father Hell, loved him? Wait a minute. Does Henry think his father loved him? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He, then, you we know, got it here. He damn near cut the grass here. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this grass. Right, right. Uh, my dad ain't even here anymore. It's, it's but I hear him say, "Get your ass gonna cut, cut the that grass." grass. Yeah. Along. Yeah. Yeah. You create good habits sometimes. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, see, here's okay. So here's my whole deal with that. So no. My daddy never threw me through a window. That never happened. Yeah. But. But see, I never let it happen to that. Like, I never. Right. My dad instilled so much fear in me. That's what I'm saying. That it would never get to that. But that's the thing I, I try to tell people uh, when, when it comes to fear. My, man, one day my dad said, he's like, he said, yo ass don't. The school call. Okay. 10th grade. World history. Uh. Forgot his name. It's called the C or something like that. He called teacher. Call my dad. Not my dad Pierce. Yeah. Cause yeah. it interrupted his show. Yeah. And I remember he was sitting down at the room table. He was like, and I came home with my mom. He was like, Why does goddamn teacher call me? <laughs> Cause you can't keep your goddamn mouth shut in the classroom. Mm -hmm. He said, if You don't keep your damn mouth shut. I'm gonna stomp a mud hole in your ass. I stood there, Mike, and I went, what is a mud hole? <laughs> you were more concerned. But I was, I was trying to figure out what? what a mud hole was to understand why the mud hole need to be stomped. So I was trying to understand the gravity yeah. of the mud hole. And I was like, what's a mud hole? It's like, I, mean, I don't want experience. Right. <laughs> Didn't sound like something I really right. Meant. It was like I yeah. will stomp a mud hole in your ass. Right. See, that was fear. Mm -hmm. People ask me all the time. They said, "He said, oh man, did you ever you skip school? Hell no. Mm -hmm. Man, you ain't play hooky. Hell no. Mm -hmm. I said I had a choice. Could I get in trouble with the cops mm -hmm. or get in trouble with my daddy? Mm -hmm. Damn the cops. Right. That ain't happening. They, I mean, I ain't even, you yeah. know, it wasn't no staying out late, acting a fool, coming home drunk. No. I was not trying to get my ass beat. <laughs> I mean, I had already enough practice. You didn't want to learn the hard way. No. Right. I, ain't, I, just, I ain't even. But by, okay, so in 10th grade, you were talking too much in class. 
Right, but here's so. But, but here's the thing. I got P's and U's all the time. So okay. like all the time. I will finish my work. It's time to communicate. <laughs> and teachers would call. Wait, 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 wait. Is that how? Is that how you? Is that how you like rationalize it? Like I want to communicate. Well, communicate. Yeah, yeah. It was like yo ass slow. Hurry up. Right. I'm done. <laughs> Why y'all taking so damn long? Right. Like, what's the problem? Right. Man, I'm sitting here, and I was like, what? P's and U's. P's and U's. P's and U's. Man, I got my ass whoopings. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. talk about blackness and what happens in black culture we're about covering these things that matter to us uh, speaking to our issues and concerns this is a genuine people powered movement There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting you get it and you spread the word we wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us we cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please, support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 2037-0196. Cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Pull up a chair. Take your seat. The Black Tape. With me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. So I was at a church in Houston. They asked me to speak at two, at two services. Um, uh, I preach, but I don't preach. My wife ordained. She got papers. I'm bootleg. Okay. Right. Okay. So I'm in my presentation with the first service. I sold out of books. I did the books. I sold out of books. I kept a stash of books in my brother's house. Okay. In Houston. I said, Dad, you can go to the house. Said, we sold out of books. I said, that's money in boxes. Go to, go to Reggie's house, get them boxes. So he came back. So he comes in, he grabbed me like three cases of books. He was coming in, I was like, yeah, my parents here. I said, um, um, so I told the story. I said, look, I, you know, I said, grow, I said, growing up, I talked a lot. I said, I got more ass whoopings. Uh, I did say ass whoopings in church, because ass is also biblical. Um, it's true. And I said, but now I get paid talk for a living. I said, my parents are living in my house in Dallas. It's paid for. Mm -hmm. I said, I paid off their car. I said, so talking did all of that. I said, so I personally think I'm owed an apology. Because that was practice. I was practicing my craft at a very early age. Mm -hmm. I said, so I really believe they owe me an apology. So in other words, like if you, if you had, if your dad had stomped a mud hole in your ass, Perhaps you wouldn't be where you are. And he would not be today. living in my paid off house. <laughs> exactly. The car would not have been paid Re off. Revenge would have been a I would not, they would not have, I would, I would not have had the OJs perform at their 50th wedding anniversary. Okay. Uh, would not have sent them on an all expense paid trip to Hawaii. None of those things would have transpired. Right. Had 
he stuck the mud hole in my ass because that could have broken my spirit. Right. That could have prevented me. Now, see, here's the thing, though. That same logic is being used to not beat people's kids these days. Like certain people use that same logic now remember, to not now beat remember, people these days. Remember, I was beaten. Right. <laughs> I just, but so I, when he mentioned that, I had flashbacks of the previous beating. Got it. So the so we had already established the marker of ass whoopings. Right. They've been established. Right. So it wasn't like we just started. It was my, my, like my brother. They, him and him and his wife. They started that. Right. They had a, they had a daughter. I think she. I think Elizabeth was like four. Okay. And, we're, and I and when I ran a website, I would just I would go to Houston, hang out their crib for two weeks. I'm like, I right. run a website from anywhere. And so um, my brother said, he said, Hey, just want you to know, you know, you know, we don't we don't spank Elizabeth. And I was like, I don't know what house she grew up in, <laughs> but I know what house you, you grew, grew up in. in. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, Okay, all right, these yeah. y'all rules, y'all yeah. new parents. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I was like, fine. Yeah. So we sit in the living room, and she's sitting probably, like, I'm sitting on the couch right here. She's probably on the edge of the seat where you are watching TV. TV loud. Right. He in the kitchen cooking. He say, Elizabeth, turn TV down. She don't move. Elizabeth, turn TV down. She don't move. And I'm reading a book, and I was like, he just asked her ass twice? Four times. <laughs> then she turned it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, 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 he asked for something else. Then, yeah, he did, she did turn down. So then I need her to do something. I said, Elizabeth, she sit, I'm sit, she right there, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, she don't move. Oh, I snatch her ass. <laughs> My brother go, he said, bro, remember, we don't spank Elizabeth. I said, cool, y'all don't spank Elizabeth. I'm about to beat the shit out of her. <laughs> I said, I am not gonna be calling a four-year-old Four times, oh, but I need her to do something. Yeah. I said, her ass gonna remember Uncle Roro next time when I call her damn name, she gonna respond. Right. Cause see, we could not, we didn't get two calls. We got one. And then the shoe. Yeah, or the shoe. <laughs> then the shoe. Or the, yeah, I mean, yo, something book, happened. Book, something was thrown something, at you. My mom, made this, my mom had baked cake, she had these damn wooden spoons. Yeah. Like yep. those wooden spoons serve multiple purposes. Yep. To stir icing and b smack the shit out of the yep. five kids. Like yep. my, my sister gave her ass a wooden spoon for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, as a throwback a couple years ago. Yeah. It's like that that was that, that was it. So no, it would we just did not and it was just different. It was the okay, that you that you, that you had this here. Remember when you only had one phone in the house? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Did your dad do this? You on the phone. Talking to a girl. I need to use the phone. Oh, yeah. Now, we felt it was respectful for them to put the phone down and give us a couple of minutes to end our phone call. Did you hear what I said? I need to use the phone. Like, I need you to end your call right now. <laughs> <laughs> he, didn't, God, yeah. he didn't hang up. He's yeah. like, I'm sorry, which part of this? <laughs> Why are you still talking? Right. Why are you still talking? Right. The only hang only answer is, babe, I'm going to call you back. <laughs> right. No. Hang up the phone. He was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think my dad. There were was, no boundaries. My dad was more encouraging in that way. He would, he would be like, he like, who are you on the phone with? Uh, uh, dad, this is, uh, this is Tiffany. All right, let me know when you are. Like he, he would encourage that, you know what I mean? No. But if, it, if it was one of my boys, he'd be like, no, you got to hang up. You got no. to hang up. Hang up now. Hang up now. He was like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did, I, did, did I tell him to use the phone? Did it stutter? <laughs> did I, I'm done. No, was, yeah. So it was, it was, yeah. it was. My sister, my the set, I had three sisters. I'm in college. Yeah. I'm home. I was like. Um, what door? And my, the oldest sister, who's under me, she's like, you. I was like, what happened? She said, Kenya told daddy this was horrible. Oh. Daddy said, oh, this is your room? Took the door. Went to the toolkit. Came back, took the hinges, the hinges off, off the, the door. door. 
get your ass dressed for the next two weeks in your room. <laughs> see, that was life. <laughs> that were real. Let's see. Now see, that's a life lesson. He had to hit nobody. He right? had to hit nobody. He had to hit nobody. I think, I think there's, there is a version <laughs> at this point. Now, if I had five kids, I don't know if I'd be able to. See, you don't have the time right. to like talk to them. Me you and my know? brother were the oldest. <laughs> you don't have they, time with five no, kids. Like, no. With five it, kids, you might have to hit somebody. You might have to make an example of the first three so that the, <laughs> the, the, the bottom two actually understand. And that's really what happened. Like, I saw what happened. That's right. That's right. No, that was I'm good. I'm right. good. I'm good. That's when everybody got mad at Joe Jackson. I was like, y'all, they had about nine, ten kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm too like, many kids, Y'all, man. I'm you like, you get mad. Them. Right. You got time to sit there and negotiate with that no, many kids. No, no. You know I mean? And, and I, don't, I don't believe in negotiation, but I, 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 I like my kid to think about what he did, and I like him to think about, you know, the, the, you know critically about why, his, why, why what he did impacted us right. and stuff. And he's kind of an analytical mind like me, which is nice, because I can have these kind right. of conversations. My daughter, mm-mm. It's like good and evil with her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's good and evil with her. You got to make it plain and simple. Did, 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 you, ever, did, did you ever have a moment where you defied one of your parents and you were like, I'm going to stand my ground and let's see who breaks? You ever had one of those moments? While I was living in their house? Yes. No. Well, we, we were eating one night. <laughs> did you? Yes. Uh, Why? Twice. Because I was eating them goddamn peas. See, I don't understand this. Right? I hate peas. Like, peas are the most, there's no flavor. There's just, like, why do peas even exist? I would eat them damn peas. Yeah. And he was like, you ain't get another piece of chicken unless you eat them peas. I said, I guess we ain't get, I said, I guess we ain't get another piece of chicken because I ain't eating them peas. He said, we gonna sit at this table till you eat them peas. And I was like, in my head, about to be some sitting motherfuckers. <laughs> I ain't about to eat them peas. Yeah. So we sat there. Mm -hmm. Me and him. Mm -hmm. Everybody else left. Mm -hmm. Four of the kids gone, mama gone. The... And here's the deal I stayed up late all the time. Right. To six, seven in the morning. Wow. My mom, to this day, I, 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 you look up, I, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm like, where we going next? Right. That's my thing. I'm sitting there like, he can't outlast me. He go, he he fall asleep. My, to this day, my dad falls asleep 30 minutes into the movie. We go ask him what happened. We're like, wake up! <laughs> the whole family was like, we ain't rewinding, no! You're right, right, right. right. So, no, he was sitting, and I was like, he ain't about to outlast me? Man, I swear we probably about two, three hours into this. You know, it was a standoff. Right. Pack this shit up and put it in the refrigerator. Take your ass to sleep. I was like, yeah, you weren't going to last me. <laughs> I mean, I was like, no. Yeah, yeah. No. But what did you gather from that? I wouldn't even got them peas. But I mean, like, what, and what did you get out of winning? I had to eat them damn peas. <laughs> so you still to this day won't eat peas? Hell no. Okay. We raised six of my nieces. I said to them, look, your job is to make sure they eat vegetables. I eat three. That's it. Okay. Cabbage, okra, green beans. Not soul food green beans. The other green beans right. that ain't being cut. That shit gotta be made in olive oil and garlic. Okay. 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 But don't don't come to me with them other. That's it. I ain't trying to. I. They say corn not a vegetable. That shit a vegetable to me. Right. Uh, but I'm not. Don't don't come to me. I, 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 I'm not eating that. Right. Cause my dad. We have vegetable week. Right. Asparagus, squash. I was like, dude, what's up with all this? Right. No, I ain't eating them damn things. I'm not gonna do it. And just that, and it's like, yo, I, you ain't. Hey, man, I when I was in elementary school, we had a Vanguard school, we had a, uh, we had a traditional school, same school, and we had this basketball game, bas biggest biggest game of the year, Vanguard versus regular school. Regular school wanted to beat our ass. Oh, you smart ass. It, it was just all. It was all that. So I had this teach, kindergarten teacher who accused me of saying something to one of the other girls that I did not say. Right. And he was like, you are not, you, you're going to sit here, you're not going to play in the game unless you apologize. I knew I ain't do nothing wrong. Shit, I guess ain't going to be no me playing that game. Now again, any other kid would have been, yo, get an apology, go play. This is like the big game of the year. Set the shorts, knee pads, laced up. Going to sit our ass right here. I ain't moved for three hours. 
straight up. I can be unmovable. <laughs> Clearly. So what I le- so what I learned there, and I've applied that in my career. I'm so happy to hear that you've applied it in your career. <laughs> now here's my question, Roland, because I think everybody wants to know: How have you applied it in your marriage? Same thing. You unmovable. Doc. Stubborn. Look. Stubborn. No, it's not stubborn. Do you just pick your battles? It's not. No. Okay. It's not stubborn. Okay. I'm clear and I'm concise. Okay. Okay. When you're clear and you're concise, here's the here's me and Sherry Shepard had this conversation. Okay, okay. Here's, here's hear the greatest, in my opinion, this is the greatest mistake that people make with marriage. Okay. They refuse to accept who a person is. Mm-hmm. This is you. What makes you you, you, what makes you unique, what makes you wonderful, all of that. I'ma let you do you. Mm-hmm. I'm not. If I was married before, first of all, I love antiques. I hate antiques. Hate shit smell old. I like dip that shit in Lysol before you bring it to the house. Okay. 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 I said <laughs> use the whole bottle of pine salt. I hate it. Why are you going to insist I go antique shopping? I hate it. Right. I'm not going to be happy. Right. I'm not happy. Your ass going to be miserable. Right. Why? If that's what you love, antique your ass for the whole weekend. Right. I'm good with that. I am perfectly fine with if somebody, if this is what somebody doesn't like and you know it and you're clear, ain't no problem. I agree with like, you. Like, don't, don't sit here and I want you to wear this here. I ain't wearing it. The person, cool. You don't have to wear it. That, the mistake I think a lot of people make is they want to change somebody. Mm-hmm. They want to alter somebody. <clears throat> they don't want to accept who they are and then say, because my whole deal is I want you to be happy. I'm happy. It's like when we go on vacation. You on vacation. I'm on vacation. Do whatever you want to do. Your ass want to go hiking? Hike the hell on. You want to go horseback riding? Horseback the hell on. I'm playing golf. Yeah. Period. And that's, that's I'm telling you, I just think that people, people, I, I see people, I had these conversations with folk and they're like, oh, you know, I'm, my other, Leave stuff all over. Well, let, let us ass leave shit in that room. Why are you like? Why are you tripping? Mm-hmm. Like I don't do that. My wife got shit all over. I, she has a plot in our room. I call it the abyss. Right. I'll be like, I, I ain't even come sitting over here. It's just right. she just got stuff. I'm like, right. you know what? This your shit. Right. This your space. Yeah, it's a reflection of you. I, but he's a whole deal though. No, no. <laughs> and you're good. You can do whatever you want yeah, over it's here. Good. Yeah. I ain't moving a damn thing. Yeah. I'm not, I ain't vacuuming over there. Mm-hmm. It's, I ain't doing none of that. Just, and I'm telling you, I'm like, we good. Yeah. Rolling good, jacket good, gone. I don't, I don't take the trash out. Right. I don't even know the schedule. She love doing that. Doc, you can't ask me a damn thing about a car. I'm not, that ain't my job. That ain't my skill set. This is my skill set. Using that as my skill set. Right. So that's that's what I've been put here to do. I don't do that. Okay. Okay. No, I get that. I agree with you. I think there if there if if there was more of that understanding and accepting accepting people for where they are, there would be a lot less conflict. Right. Conflict. Yeah. We like that. She like. She, look, I got dry cleaning stuff. I got stuff that I wash piles. Light, dark, hot, warm, cold. She like you got to me in special clothes. She like that. I'm, that's true. And I was like, we all good. Don't wash my shit. I don't need you washing. I got it. Mom and dad taught me how to cook, how to bake, how to clean. The only thing I do not know how to do that I regret is how to sew a button on. Cause I've had too many buttons break, and I'm like, damn, I don't know how to sew a button on. I just need to go ahead and just learn it. They got YouTube videos. Nope. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> Cause what's gonna happen? Well, you gotta learn it from somebody no, no, you gotta older than you. Now, now you, you gotta, gotta learn it. Now you gotta. You, you somebody gotta show. Yeah, you gotta learn from somebody older. You can't just sit. Say, hey, how you learn how to sew? But YouTube. No, you can't, that shit don't. It don't even sound like a good story. My mama taught me how to sew. My dad taught me how to sew that button. I mean, what? That, that ain't even a good ass story. Okay, but who taught me YouTube? I understand it, but if you really want to learn, I mean, I really want to learn. But <laughs> really I really want to learn. learn. I mean, <laughs> okay, but you don't I really want to learn. learn. I don't really want to learn. Right, right. Because right. like it would be nice if you knew. Right, because if somebody could show you. If I got, if I got that much time, I'm actually doing some other shit. I'm right. gonna learn some other stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just because yeah. I'm just I'm a, I am a believer of I don't need unnecessary shit in my head. Yeah. I don't. No, that's that's a good, there's a lot of shit in you know in terms of the the bandwidth that we have these days and there's so much going on. Would you agree that there's more going on now? Oh, than absolutely. Ever before? Oh, absolutely. Like it's just, is it, it, the the flood of information? And I think what we have to learn is how to actually slow everything down, diminish everything. Again, it, it's knowing what you do. Yeah. For me, this is what I do. This is I've done media since I was 14 years old. So just right. like I, when I run to people who are actors, who are singers, yeah. who are athletes, and like, oh, since I was in elementary school, this is what I do. Yeah. I don't let anything else get in. I'm not interested in other stuff. Like right. this, this is what this is what I want to do. And the thing for me is, and, and I, I enjoyed learning my craft and learning about a, a new camera or, you know, I like that camera angle, that camera shot. Right. So that's what I love. Right, right. And I just, and again, we're real quick because, like, I don't know about you. So, so did y'all have a conversation before you got married? Like, look, I don't like this. I don't like this. I'm good with this. So, like, for instance, I said, I ain't trying to see no bills. Okay. I don't want... I don't want to see no bills. We don't need to have a conversation about bills. Do what you do. I'm going to go to work. All I know is when I go use my card, it works. <laughs> I ain't had that conversation. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm used to bills. <laughs> I mean, we all had bills, but I was yeah. like, look, I, I, I don't. Yeah. So if you're somebody who knows how to manage money well, yeah. do you? Right. Got it. You're a role player. A hundred percent. You're like stay in your lane, you stay in your lane, you do your job, you do that's did you play team sports? I played because you talk about the the bat the knee baseball pads growing and stuff up, like I played basketball in junior high school, two years of baseball in high school. Okay. So you got enough team sports and, and then... But it's, but it's, but it's all for But when you do media, it's the same thing as team. That's what I'm saying. That's, I, yeah. I, I, try to tell this, I try to tell this people all the time. I think team sports helps everybody understand yes. how Plus to... Plus I play in the band. That's the, okay. It really That's was band. Thing. It really was music. That's another thing. It really was you music. You understand. You got to work with other people to understand how to make an operation like this work. Yeah. So that everybody kind of plays their lane. Everybody plays their role. Everybody plays their position because that's how you make real music. Yes. And that, that is, I, I, I stand with you on And especially if you that. like it. Like, yeah. for instance, I do not like fixing shit. Got it. Okay. That ain't what I do. Yeah. I have no, comedian Royal Watkins, I saw him on Instagram, he, he put together, he did, he like refinished a door. Right. Never. Right. Roland ain't never going to refinish a door. Right. There's a some bitch out there right. who has studied how to refinish doors. Let them do it. I don't believe in yeah. taking food off their table. Right. Now when his or her ass decides to host a show, then I might consider refinishing that door. <laughs> I believe everybody right. I ain't taking food off your table. I ain't taking food, you take food off my table. I'm good. I right. ain't that ain't I'm like I'm perfectly right. We had a, a sink. Something happened with the piping, so my wife must was supposed to go f- get it fixed. I was like, let me know when y'all get this, get this thing fixed. That ain't what I do, okay? Right. I'm going to shoot some shit. Right. They doing stuff. Damn, I got to cook something. Damn, water, come on. Shh, let me go fix this shit. Damn. <laughs> I'm saying, you I, really don't want to do it. I was not happy. I, no, I knew. I was like, okay. Hit a pipe, got it, fastener. Oh. Go to Home Depot. You know what I'm saying? It's not your thing. No, you, no, you don't understand. I don't, I don't think oh, you. Like, Jesus was my, a carpenter, my, Roland. That was Jesus. Where is, where is, where that is was your Jesus. manhood, Roland? That was Jesus. <laughs> I ain't fixing shit. I'm not, no. No. Right. I so I you. go, all right, damn, I got to fix this. Right. Because I, I got, I'm cook, I'm cook, I can't cook because the damn water's going down, hitting the thing. I don't know where they went. I'm like, when y'all back? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> fix this damn right. piping. Right. Man, I go, in the, I go in the Home Depot, walk in. I was like, all right, yo, man, this piece that's broke, give me another one. I need a fat, need, 
how many two fashions? Guys like, uh, I said, I, I need this cut. He's like, well, you're gonna need a hacksaw. I said, man, what's a hacksaw? You don't know what a hacksaw is. I said, motherfucker, no. <laughs> I said, if you wanna know how to build a newspaper, call my ass. Right. You wouldn't know how to design one, this ain't the shit I do. <laughs> Just show me what a goddamn hacksaw is so I can get out this damn store. <laughs> It's when you know what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then there's those people who are like the jack of all trades. No. Nope. The master of none. And I, then, you know, you, you, you believe in being the master of one trade. I do one thing and then I golf. Precisely. Right. Okay. That's it. We, ain't okay. try, we don't need to sit here and have a discussion. No. Uh -huh. That's why you grew up with Yellow Pages, right? Yeah. That's why that shit exists. Call somebody. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing. Creating. Making moves. That move us all forward. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Hatred on the streets, a horrific scene, a white nationalist rally that descended into deadly violence. White people are losing their damn minds. As an angry pro-Trump mob storms the U.S. Capitol, we've seen shock. We're about to see the rise of what I call white minority resistance. We have seen white folks in this country who simply cannot tolerate black folks voting. I think what we're seeing is the inevitable result of violent denial. This is part of American history. Every time that people of color have made progress, whether real or symbolic, there has been what Carol Anderson at Emory University calls white rage as a backlash. This is the rise of the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. America, there's going to be more of this. There's all the Proud Boys, guys. This country is getting increasingly racist in its behaviors and its attitudes because of the fear of white people. The fear that they're taking our jobs, they're taking our resources, they're taking our women. This is white fear. I prayed to the Lord, uh -huh. Lord, I need you. I'm real specific with my prayers. Yeah. God, I need you to provide me with enough resources to do three things. Okay. Number one, valet park. <laughs> Dude, I'm from, I'm from Houston, big ass parking lots. Do you understand what it was like when you would go shopping with your parents in the parking lot full and your ass parked way the hell over there and you sitting there growing up like, damn, that'd be nice if we could, damn, just drop the car off right up front. That was on the prayer list. Okay. Number two, Lord, I need to be able to run my air conditioner 
all day on 70. Wow. Grew up in Houston. That's very specific. Because that shit was on 80. Right. Do you know what it's like living in Houston, Texas, and it's August, and the AC is set on 80? Meaning it- That sounds counterintuitive. No, 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 because the deal is uh, we ain't have no high le- electric bill, so I was, it, okay, we're sweating. Right. No, God, they turn the fan on. What, f- we're, is, we got central, no, you ain't paying these bills. Right. No lie, bro, I graduated from college, had my job, went home, and the unit was right next to my parents' bedroom. So, I mean, we had, had brought, it wasn't even 2,000 square foot of the house we grew up in. That unit was right outside their bedroom. So whenever that unit turned on, my dad, that day, he heard the damn fan. Yeah, yeah. Man, I came home, I go, I said, this is some bullshit. I ain't sitting in this hot ass house this weekend. So I dropped that thermostat. This, this wasn't on the punch button, no, no. This is when you get to slide it down. Right, right, right. I slid that sucker down to 70. Man, this thing out here, <laughs> jump out the bed. He had like an extra lock on. Five kids, you ain't coming up in them. <laughs> you can hear. Yeah, yeah. Door open, runs out, goes to the thermostat. Who put this on 70? This was me. I don't want to hear nothing for the rest of the weekend about that AC. A $200 check. All right, look, that's going to pay for probably for the rest of the month. That's going to be on 70 the rest of this damn weekend. And that was like. Shit, all right, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, the principal is gone. Hey. You know what I'm saying? The finances are there. You you stepped up. You ACO did the right 80, thing. you don't pay the light bill. That's a classic father-son moment to me. 70? Step up. Here. You, you want it on 70, you pay Boom. for it. Boom. Step up. He was like, shit, okay. Okay. Got the rest of the month. The third one, I got to be able to call somebody to fix shit. Lord, I said, I just, that's what I need. I said, I need, I need you to provide the resources yeah. to do these three things yeah. for me. Ballet bar, run my AC all day and call somebody to fix stuff. Run my ballet park. <laughs> you can't ballet park everywhere. <laughs> Most places now you can. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Go, okay, you walk out the joint. Yeah. It's raining. It's cold. It's hot. Yeah. You tired. I don't drink. You could be, a, you could, you, you ain't trying. I got, now nah, go look for the car. I got, no. I want to be able to walk out. Voila. Car. Got it. Goals. Yeah. yeah. You sanitize your, uh seat and your steering wheel after somebody ballets your car? Well, they don't ballet shit now, so everything, you know, it's just cold. Oh, the ballet's back. Oh, not not, not Virginia. Oh. No, nah, they uh, like, mm, park your shit over there. Oh, really? Yeah. So COVID, hey. COVID put an COVID end just put to it. your prayers. But, but, no, 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 right. No, 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 no the COVID put an end to your prayers. No, no, the prayers work because of, because of my status. I'm going to park right there. Oh, Mr. Martin, yeah, go ahead and just leave your car right there. Go ahead. Right, right, you, right. You keep the keys right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you, still, you still get away with it. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. like, I run other places. So, like, roll, man, I love your show. Yeah, go ahead and just park right there. Go ahead. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, no, there, there are privileges it. with that. So there it's are like, pri- <laughs> Yeah, there are privileges. It's like, and it's like, it's always you go somewhere, yeah. and especially when you got, see, my wheelhouse is a middle-aged black woman. Psh, my. We good. Right. We good. Right. They do me probably like they, how they do you. Ooh, I love your eyes. Mm. Ooh, I love your, you so smart in the new doc. We in. I roll up and I'm like, shit, oh, we good. No problem. Don't matter what it is. Give me a middle-aged black woman who's a security guard. Yeah. Doc, I was at the NBA All-Star game here with the yeah. party. Brother's like, oh, you got a band? Sister's like, this. Mr. Mark, come on in. Don't, don't mind his ass. So I go, and I, we go to the elevator. I hear, see, I told you, little young son of a bitch, you need to watch the goddamn news. Do you know who that is? Right. That's Mr. Roland Martin. That's the man who speaks for black America. 
What the hell is wrong with your ass? See, you walk around here watching that bullshit YouTube videos all damn day. You should be watching some goddamn TV. Mr. Martin, I'm sorry, you and your wife, y'all go here and enjoy the party. He said, the young ass don't know shit. Y'all don't watch shit, don't read shit. That's rolling damn Martin. What's wrong with you? Dude, I am cracking up laughing at the elevator. Yeah, there are perks. There are perks. There are definitely perks. TSA agents, yeah. Shh. It works well. It works well. And see, when you got pull, yeah. yeah, like that's real currency. Oh. Some people don't understand that's real currency. Like you know, you could, you could be like Jeff Bezos and they don't recognize you. You know, and then again, you don't, you don't go to airports. Yeah, yeah, because just yeah, you, just, yeah, you, you just don't, yeah, you don't call you don't, up and tell them, yeah, yeah, get it ready, bring, meet me at Target, <laughs> yeah, with the helicopter yeah. and take me to right, the, uh, <laughs> right. Now he don't even drive I, to yeah, the airport. He don't, he don't even just you know wipers. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> Say you don't even. It oh is. It God. is currency. Yeah. It, it, it is, is real currency though. Like if you you still do the you know kind of the the commercial way of life. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You go to airports, and uh, uh, train still stations, do, still and do. stuff. I, I still but, get mad love from everybody who works. That's what I'm about to say. I love that. Explain. I, explain to the people, man, what that black love is. And I know that's a good question. Up, a lot of people give us love. Hold up. I got yeah. I got white fans. Yeah. I got Latino Asian fans. But black love is dog. I mean, it's brought me to tears some t- several times. Yeah. No, it, it is. So, so the stigma is that we don't stick together, and in some ways, that's true. You know what I mean? We like, you know, when when we do something in the public eye, there can be we could be the first ones to tear each other up. Right. Right. But I think black love, in ter- it is the currency that, like, I, I agree with you. When you get it, when you receive it, you can't help but feel like not only validated in what you do, but it makes you work harder. Oh yeah. Right? It makes, it makes me want to work harder. It makes me want to make more movies or more TV shows that, that service this audience. Because at the end of the day, they can, like you said, they can take your life and make it, make something that would seem exhausting and laborious and, and all of this, yep. they can just simplify it and bypass certain things and just, like you said, you know, it's like just push you on through. And quite frankly, that is a, a currency that, is, you know, you can't really put a price tag on that. Yeah. You know, it is, it is, I mean, you know, I've been in airport lounges and, you know, been like, yeah, uh, you know, I got two other people with me, and they're like, "Yeah, just you know, you good, you know, <laughs> just go ahead." You know what I mean? And it's Dude, like, I've had it's I, good, and then that, but that there's also I've also like gone to the airport on my way to like a funeral, yeah, and been like emotionally a wreck, and they can just feel that yeah. and be like, "I don't know what's going on." But I'm gonna pray for you, and I'm gonna make sure you are right. Mm-hmm. Come this way. Mm-hmm. Come this way. And you'll be like. And I understand that everybody would like it if it went that way for right. them. I totally get it. Um, and it's 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 sad that it can't always be right. that way. But um, when it happens to me, you talk about black love. That right there, when they recognize, they recognize where you are. Man, nothing better than that. We man. we we've had so we we have these. Uh, we, we were saying, my crew. That was a bow down moment. Okay. So, so Henry, who you met, Henry, yeah. Henry, Henry has struggled with. Um, the, I can hear him right now. I can oh, hear him. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's he, wondering he, he how did this happen to he me. He struggled yeah. with because when he first met, he was like, "Man, man, I run DC. I'm the man." I was like, "Well, that was before I got here." <laughs> so, so, so we have this. Constant, like, yeah, people know you, you know, but come on. I just, yeah. I mean, you ain't really a celebrity. Like, right. You ain't that big. And I was like, okay. Watch this. So there have been multiple bow down moments, right. things that have happened. Right. So we went to Essence. Since you brought up Essence. Yes, yeah. Essence. Okay. Essence. So well, they give you the little media pass, but. <laughs> It's a bunch of people got media pass. Right. I told my crew at TV once, I told my boss, I said, yeah, I need you to make up us our own credentials. 
So this is what TV One. So they had big old TV One logo. And I was like, don't buy no TV One. I have no disrespect, but right. I had a big social media file. Uh, I was like, don't buy no TV One. I said, so put that at the bottom. I said, I need you to put a large photo of me. I was like, on the show logo. So he put a little hologram on it too. Yeah. So he was like, hey, what's this bullshit? This, little, this shit ain't gonna do nothing. What the? I was like, okay. So <laughs> we did one year. He's trying to go through a side door. Dude's like, you can't come through here. He said, no, but I got I mean, he said, don't matter. You gotta walk all the way around now. You can't come through here. We come upstairs, he pitching. Man, I'm mad as hell. I'm like, dude, why are you? God, this is the first day. Why are you tripping? Man, dude wouldn't let me come through that. I like, oh, that shit ain't gonna happen to me. He's like, oh, oh so you think you think you all that and shit, huh? Ain't gonna happen. I was like, yeah. <laughs> So it's time for us to go hit the floor. So we're gonna escalate it. You know how, like, when you were a kid, like, you talking behind your pen? You know, yeah. yeah, you think, yeah, you wonder well, what you gonna do. You are. I'm hearing all this back there. <laughs> we get to the bottom of the escalator. I walk out. He's like, Mr. Morton, how you doing? You can walk your way right through here. And he was like, Man, I was just here. What, what? He was like, He says, You ain't tell me you work, Mr. Martin. <laughs> so, took an ego hit. Took an ego hit. Ooh, that wasn't that wasn't that, yeah. wasn't, that wasn't the biggest ego hit. So then he's still talking, talk to me. Shit ain't doing nothing. So they going to the Superdome. They in the SUV. Rub the cops. Y'all ain't got no parking pass. Y'all ain't got no. What y'all think y'all doing? Dale driving. Dale showed a credential. He like, say. Move them barricades. They were rolling. <laughs> That's currency, man. They went yeah. through three barricades. Yeah. He was like, the hell? What? I was like, I told you. Yeah. Stop playing with me. Yeah. But the one that finally did it, they woke up late. They about to miss the flight. They get to the airport. It's 20 minutes before the flight leave. Meaning the door going to close. Yeah. 15, 10 minutes. Yeah. Dale, like, I gotta make this flight. Dale roll up, he's like, my boss is on the plane. I have to get this to him and I have to be on this flight. Now mind you, this essence, Monday morning, lying right all yeah. in the airport. Right. Why Dale make that flight? Every TSA person let him through. And he texts them like, made the flight. They're like, they're like how did he make the flight? He's like, Phew. Sure, they roll the Martin pass. <laughs> it's 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 like an easy pass on the freeway. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like it is it is a real currency, and I'm grateful for it. Let's and it's call it what but it it's is. It's love. Like, it's love because it's like we all looking out for each other. Like you, you know, like what you do, you looking out for us, and we gotta look out for you. Like it's a mutual thing. Right. And and I think that that is you know kind of one of the the benefits of of, of what we do and how. We look out for each other. And how other. we touch and people. And that's yeah. the thing, man, that I explain to people. You have to, you have to, it's how you impact people. I've had people come up to me, man, who, who, dude, I wasn't following politics until I started watching you. Man, Got how it. you break. And yeah. like, this, like, I'm talking about, I've had people emotional who, yeah. who just embrace you and, and, and they're crying. Yeah. And they're, and that's the thing, which is why I tell people, don't play with this. Mm-hmm. And don't take this for granted. Never. And that's the thing right there. No, it, it means the world to me. It, it really does. And even my family has seen the benefits of it. You know what I mean? And, and it's Gee, like, my you know. Brother, my brother was in Canada. Really? Dude was like, Roland Martin. People think we twins. Right. He was like, no, nah, man. He said, no, nah, man. I see you on TV. Come, I'm going to give you a free limo ride. Yeah. Come on. My brother was like, I was like. Go with that shit. Like, yeah. People really think we twins. He was like, he, he go all around the country he's like, no, I'm not my brother. They're like, yeah, bro, stop tripping. That's you. <laughs> For real? Ser wow. Seriously, man. Wow. One woman argued us down and said we were not twins. She said we were twins. I'm like, okay. He was born November 13th, 1967. I was born November 14th, 1968. I think we know if we're not twins. She's like, nah, y'all twins. But a year apart, like that. One year, one day. That's that's twins. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> this technically twins. So 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 he's he's gone long with it a, right. a couple times. Right. He's technically twins though. I yeah, get it. Know. I mean, you know what I mean. If I saw my and, and we look alike. Really. 
Yeah, people okay. looking like. But it was uh, so to the point that his wife got mad because folk thought they son was mine. Oh wow. Okay. And it, 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 it of course it didn't help the situation that the son was born November twelfth. Wow. Right. We all Valentine's Day babies. All I was going to say, yeah. Day. My, my whole family was August birthday, so we were all like Thanksgiving babies. Oh, yeah, they were all screwing right there. Yeah, right. Like Thanksgiving, like right after Thanksgiving, they made everybody conceive a child. Because <laughs> <laughs> we got a ton of August birthdays in my family. Yeah, like, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, do turkey and dressing. Uh, it's something about Thanksgiving that led to a bunch <laughs> of baby making. Wow! August had, we had like, poof. 10, 12 birthdays. Yeah, yeah. In August, in the month of August. My nephew Chris, 12th. I'm 13. Brother, I'm th brother 13, 14. My grandmother was a 16. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were. We there used to be a, a, a streak of birthdays for like eight, nine days where every other day was a birthday. Dang. And it was magical. You know, it was magical. So yeah, I I, I get it. You know what I mean? I get the the. The holidays tend to lead to baby making. Yeah, yeah. You know what so, I mean? I get it. I get yeah, those are our markers. Those are our markers. Okay. Okay. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Does it get better than never getting lost? Does it get better than not parallel parking yourself? Alexa, ask Smart Feed to feed the dog. Does it get better than feeding your dog from 50 miles away? Yes, it does. At Buick, we see a future that's even better because the life-enhancing innovations you've never even dreamed of, Buick is dreaming of them every day. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. Is there something that you want to do in your career that you haven't done? What, what would you really like to do? There, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot. Like I, you know, people always ask me if I want to direct and I'm like, yeah, but there's so many things I want to do as an actor right. first. Um, and I'm, I'm stupid like that. Like I'd prefer to just knock this all out right. and then do right. that. Um, but everybody's like, you got to multitask. You got to do this. And I'm like, uh, you know, it's just not what I, I disagree. Do. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If I mean, when you in the pocket, no, you stay in the pocket. I, I mean, but you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Like, like you, I, I don't want to mix it up. Like, I, want, I don't want to direct myself in something either. Right. Like, I'd, write, I'd rather pick one and do that. And it's also focus. It's what you, yeah. what are you channeling your energies into? Right, right. So, you know, that, that's where I'm at. But in terms of, like, things that I want to do, like, there was a time when I wanted to do biopics and stuff, and I no longer want to do biopics. Really? Yeah, because I find them all to be a little bit cliche or the same. You know what I mean? It feels like the same story kind of over and over and over Well, but again. it's Hollywood. It's a formula. Right. Like so, so, so if so, you do one, it's like maybe you do one where you help write it and you redefine it. Yeah, I mean, if you could redefine, I mean, to redefine the biopic would be would be epic because it hasn't been done in, in my opinion. But I feel like uh, growing up, painful, overcoming experience, adversity, overcoming. whether it was familial or, you know, systemic or, you know, drugs or, you know, right. whatever I want to see is. a biopic where, no, all my shit good. Everything was good. <laughs> but but everybody finds that boring. Right? Everybody finds that boring because they're like, well, what's the, where's the, where's the tragedy? Yes, what did yes, you overcome? Yes, right. And so, Wait, I, I, where's the pain? So that's what I'm saying. So the genre itself has been defined by the struggle. And I struggle with um, the black aesthetic mm. and the black aesthetic being rooted in pain. Yeah. I yeah. struggle with that right. because I feel like, you know, while I think there's room for that, for sure, there's room for that, you know, I can't watch another slavery movie. 
you know? And, and I can't find the beauty in a slavery movie anymore because there's nothing more. That's just somebody defining the black aesthetic mm -hmm. as an art form and it's rooted in pain and misery and oppression. Well, that's kind of what made, in my opinion, Black Panther work, mm -hmm. was that, you know, nobody was oppressing Wakanda. <laughs> right. Nobody was oppressing Wakanda. In fact, Wakanda was more advanced and ahead of everything else. Right. They were the standard by which, and the secret, right? They were the standard and the secret. And that was kind of, beautiful to see because too often the black aesthetic yep. as i said whether it's art music you're talking about mary it's rooted in pain right it's rooted in pain like we got artists with great songs you look at i'm sure if you did the um somebody asked me about playing Smokey robinson one time and i remember thinking to myself what do he go through because you got to go through something. you got to overcome no, something it's, it's you know smoke, what i mean smoky like, Smokey went through the drug addiction. Right. Uh, but so did 90% right. of musicians, right. artists, and right. people that died early. Like, it's, it's like, I mean, it's kind of like once you've seen one or two of them, I feel like you kind of get it. And while everybody's struggle is different, if it's all about drugs or if it's all about, you know, like your father beating you or right. abuse and stuff like that, I feel like we've all done that. We've it's like, it. it's, it, wait, wait, it's, it's sort of like when... I remember when the Cosby Show came out. That's not us. A actually, it is. Uh, when I talked to uh, right. Maddie Rich, the Inkwell, that, that ain't us. No, no, actually, it is. It is. And, and so part part of the problem, actually, it, I believe, for African Americans, what has not happened is too many of us have not been truly exposed to really who we are. Yes, there have been right. black folks on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. There have been black people who set up oil deals yeah. in other countries. There have been African Americans who have done a multitude of things. But the problem is when you're walking around and you've only seen or heard one or two things. The nation's first black newspaper was Freedom's Journal. Um, and they wrote on March 16, 1827, we wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us. Yeah. And that's the mantra of the black, the black press. Right. And that's crucial because... Send me that, by the way. I need, I need to nah, keep it, that because that that's and, everything. And, and those of us who worked in black newspapers, like we literally have... Like it's, that has been yeah. stamped into... Yeah. I mean, like we, you memorize that. Yeah. That's what, it is for, that's what it is for me in the shows that I've done when I've been places. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We, we're going to tell the story. Yeah. Through our prism. Yeah. From our perspective. Um, that's why, you know, again, when I, I was talking to somebody, they were asking me, they said, we're going to talk about it. I was like, it's just going to happen. Right. Because to me, I said, no, it's, a, it's a conversation. It's just, it's just a dialogue. Right. It's just, and then whatever comes out of it, that's what it's comes great. out of it. Yeah. I don't have an executive sending me notes. Right. Well, we, we, we need to focus on this. It's like I, I, I said when that's the one who was like, yeah, but I'm not pitching anything. I don't need you to pitch anything. Why do we always have to do that, though? Like, this is, this is why I said yes, unequivocally, because in my opinion, everybody wants you to come and talk and hopefully get something that goes viral. But at the same time, you know, the incentive is you get to pitch what you want to sell to the people. And oftentimes, like, I think as an artist, you don't always feel like selling. You know right. What I mean? you don't and and, and, and like see, my deal is selling, you when know? you have something come out, like, yo, Mike, let me know. I'm gonna push it out. Great. That's great. And that, and it's as simple as that. Again, that's that's black love. But I also think going back to what you were saying about what where we are, we're not allowed the spectrum that other folks are allowed Absolutely. to have. And that's you talk about the inkwell. Spectrum, Cosby the show. range, right. We have done great things. We have great teachers. Where's the Mansa Musa story? Like we we have done amazing right. things, right? We have done amazing things. But all we're told through the, the spectrum of Hollywood media technically is this this black aesthetic that we have not right. necessarily put forth of 
let's see the pain and the suffering because right. that makes for good drama. Right. Right? And 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 that's because what, that's they are deciding yeah. what gets made. And that's slowly changing because of what we were talking about before yeah. the interview, and which is, you know, people are starting to 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 open up to telling the stories that uh, haven't been told and the experiences of black people that haven't been seen, you know, whether it's a, a black skater, you know what I mean? Like we ain't seen that story. That's fascinating to me because, you know, often, you know, where's the, 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 the like you, you, if you were to sit around with your boys and say, well, where's the blackness in, in skateboarding? I guarantee yep. you there's a skater oh, out there who could, who could make this uh, abundantly clear, who can make it abundantly clear that you can be very black and, and, oh, that was a, and, wait a minute, that was a, wait a minute, that was a, someone, someone sent me, uh, there was some, some cats in Ghana. Oh yeah? I think who was skateboarders. Okay. And this video went viral. Okay. And they were just, show, it, they were just showing you the flavor and everything. It's just, but it, you're right in terms of, I always say, I remember when, when Amanda Seals went after uh, Will Smith for playing um, Richard Williams. You know, why they make a movie? It's called King Richard. Why is it about him? Not about Serena and Venus. Because mm. ain't no Serena and Venus without Richard. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't yeah. say, oh, and and why not be one about Richard and Serena and Venus? No, damn that. How about having a movie that's about Richard? And what about Serena? And what about Venus? Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot of time. I think that because of the 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 dearth mm-hmm. of movies and stories, we want that one to say everything, mm-hmm. as opposed to no no no. It's just going to say this here. And what's interesting about what you just said is this: oftentimes when we see that one that's supposed to kind of do it for us, we always walk away feeling like they didn't tell the whole story. Right. Because one can't that, tell everything. Exactly. A two-hour movie cannot tell you no. the whole story of anyone's life. So let's not get one. Let's not, have five. Yeah. Let's have ten. And I and and that's and that's that's why I think that's why a lot of times I tell people we've got to pull back on. I Man, I don't like that because that's just one. So the problem that we've it's had just the is beginning, we've right? never it's just had. The beginning, yeah. We've never. That's why when when again for Cosby Show people acted. It was like. They ain't the black experience. Why? Because you've only been shown that this is one perspective of being black. Yes, and then all of a sudden you tell these stories. No, there are black couples who are doctors and lawyers and who raise kids and I actually upper middle grew up with a lot of people in you know the DMV. Right. A lot of doctors came out of Howard and and, and Meharry and and all these uh, other schools and. They re- relocated PG County, you know, is filled with the HBCUs with and got HBCUs, black art on the wall. Got black they art got- on the wall, and they, you know, they they respect jazz, and, and they were very much. And and you're right. I remember when the Cosby Show came out, there was a backlash. Like this wasn't us, doctor and a lawyer, and because it, it was, was like, Cosby, then Fox it, had South Central. But yeah, and then there was oh, that, that's us. No, right, that might be you, right. That's not all of us. But the, the interesting thing is that people were cool with the Jeffersons, right? People were cool with the Jeffersons, but somehow the Cosby Show was unreal. You had a black man mm. own his own business. Uh, living in a high rise. Own his own business, living in a high rise. In New York City. Exactly. In New York City. On the east side? Come, Come on. on, man. You know that that's impossible. So, so it's like, it was happening, right? It was happening. And then on top of that, um, you know, before that, it was like you had good times. Right, and it's like if they're not struggling in a Norman mm. Lear in a Norman mm. Lear world, mm. right? If they're not struggling, then this can't be us. And while there are people that can relate to, you know, good times and the single parent household and all of that and the struggle and being in the hood, that's all great. But that's not that doesn't speak for the whole diaspora. And I and this is why I think we have an opportunity, like I said, to show a spectrum right. of the black experience as opposed to this this kind of uh, tunnel vision version that is rooted in pain and abuse and tragedy and all of that and the good feelings of winning a small victory. You know what I mean? And and it's like, uh, you know, everybody didn't grow up like. Uh, uh, What's his name? Uh, Raising in the Sun. Oh, uh, Walter Lee. Right. 
You know what I mean? Like the, the Lees in that one. It's like this, this is the black experience. And it's like, it's a part of it. Right. It's a or, part of it. That's yours. And yeah, that is. That's that, a part of it's, it. It's like I've had, you've seen this before. They, they have these conversations and it comes up and they start talking about um, um, single mothers raising kids. Mm -hmm. And and I've seen this happen so many times. Mm -hmm. And folks are like, now hold up, now wait a minute, now wait a minute. You know, my mama raised me and my mama was it. They go on and on and on. And I, and I go, you ever asked your mama if she actually wanted that experience? I'm like, y'all, no, it happened. I said, you can't find, you can't tell me that somebody who said, I voluntarily wanted to raise a child by myself and struggle and go through pain. No, things happened. I, I didn't want any help. Right. Yeah, I, I said that only. I said I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. And then the problem is when you come along and you say, I grew up with my mama and dad. My mom and dad is still married. It's like you're an alien. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This was not going to happen. You are not. We yeah. are not going to have a discussion. And we're going to define the black family through the prism yeah. of only single black mothers. Yeah. I say it because what you're not going to do yeah. is negate my grandfather and grandmother, yeah. maternal. Not my mama and dad. That's my experience. Right. And so when I speak and people say, well, why don't you take into account, you know, people grew up in single families. I said, because that ain't my experience. Right. If you ask Roland, to right. come share my experience, I'm going to share you the experience of mama, daddy, five kids, growing yeah. up in a house that we owned. Yeah. I said, was it middle class? Yes, I can stand on my corner, see the DEA and the Houston Police Department take down a crack house. Well, I can also see family next door, raising kids, loving them, next door, across the street, the Jordans over here. Yep. And I said, so I said, same, I said, same spot, mm -hmm. crack house right there, strong black families here. I said, but you're not going to lie, I said, you're not going to shut me up and not tell right. that story because that has to be told. That's what I'm saying. It, it all has to be told. Like the whole spectrum has to be told. It, it just does. We can't just do it that way. You know who broke that mystique for me, if you will, or that, that uh, misnomer about single mothers was Taraji. Mm. Taraji. One day on set we were talking and she broke down how she is, you know, black women have definitely made being a single mom look like the strongest thing you could possibly ever right. do. Absolutely, right? They no choice. Kevin Durant's mom, Wanda, the real MVP, right? right? But like you said, um, <laughs> you know, what, what Taraji said was, I tell people all the time, I never wanted to do it this way. Boom. I didn't seek this out. I have found strength in being the only one. But no, I did not want it this way. And I remember being like, that, it, I'm not gonna say it blew my mind, but it opened me up to the, to the reality that I had been somewhat brainwashed into thinking right. that just because single black moms are strong individuals, they don't need any help. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it was fascinating, or they never want any help, right? right? You know what I mean? And, 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 and when I say help, I don't mean like somebody to take care of them per right. se. I'm saying a partner. Right. That's what they I'm saying. They ain't trying to have to be the one to work, cook, pick up, uh, it's hold hard. you, scold you, it's love hard you. To do it in a relationship. Well, it's with two I people. I can't even. I mean, when I think about how hard it would be to try and do this, to do what I'm doing, with 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 by myself. I'm, I I mean, the empathy that I have for anybody right. who's put in that situation. It has grown And they're yours. So I don't have biological kids. Yeah. We've raised six of my nieces multiple times in the last 18 years. Okay. But, but I have no biological children. Right. But that's, it was like, it was, it's, it's just a whole different world. It is. My nieces came a year and a half. I was like, yeah. Damn, they kept 1,500? Yeah. For twins? I'm like, damn. And I was making $110,000 a year. I'm like. That's a lot. Again, so you start understanding that. So, man, it, it, it's, it's a whole different deal. 
Last question for you. Okay. I asked you about something you really, really want to do. How do you, how do you deal with oh Michael Ely? Oh, he he gonna play the light skinned sexy brother boxes. How do you deal with the boxes that folk all of a sudden certain scripts might come, mm. certain characters? How do you deal with saying, don't put me in a box? I ain't trying to be in a box. I need range, I need diversity. Like when you the dude who was hiding under the bed, uh, uh, perfect guy. Uh, right, I was like, his ass evil. Right. Said, <laughs> something but, wrong with him. Yeah, right, something wrong, wrong with his ass. With him, but yeah. again, it, but 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 that but that was a mm -hmm. departure from from different yeah. roles. How how do you make it clear? Don't put me in a box. Uh, I I challenge myself as an artist and challenge knowing that I'm going to challenge the audience right so oftentimes you come into this business off of one project where everybody's like ooh ooh you stand out okay for me it was barbershop Ricky da 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 Ricky was nothing like me growing up mm -hmm. right like, I, I, nothing like me growing up but if that's people's first experience with you right as an audience member they tend to think that's the real you right so, uh, you know, for me, after that, I got a whole bunch of offers to play roles just like Ricky, right? This Tupac S type of, mm -hmm. type of thug, right? And I just said no over and over again, right? And then you keep trying to do other things. And then I went through a, a series of romantic movies mm -hmm. and romantic leads. And, you know, I always try to bring some sort of gravitas to those roles. And then it was like, okay, well, but before I get into all of that, let me hit y'all with, you know, for color girls and, you know, step outside of mm -hmm. the realm of, you know, what you expect of me to do um, as an audience member in terms of being this romantic lead and everything. Because I didn't get into this business to be the romantic lead, you know, that dude. Like, I didn't get into this business. Because you can get locked in. You can totally get locked in. But, uh, Hugh but Grant think, talked about that. But I think you, but, and have you seen what he's been doing in the last seven years? Hugh Grant has done some amazing work, amazing work from Paddington to The Gentleman. He's done some amazing work. The point is you have to kind of break that mold yourself, right? If people said, Roland, you ain't no good unless you got CNN, you wouldn't be here today. You know what I mean? You have to do things for yourself. Absolutely. You have to break the Which is why the, I was still with TV One. I never left when I joined CNN. I'm like, no, no I'm gonna, I can do both. You can do both. But, but, but what I'm saying is, yeah. you know, you can, you have to kind of break these molds yourself. Yep. And, you know, there are people who to this day say, I have not forgiven you for what, ha what you did <laughs> in For Colored Girls. And I will say to them unequivocally, that is a high compliment. Mm -hmm. That is a high yeah, compliment. I mean, you, you, you affected them and impacted. You saw a character and not me. And I get that. And I appreciate that. And that makes me happy. Because before that, all you could see was, you know, physically what I look like. And you wanted to go yep. with that. And you wanted to put me in a box. And then when I stepped outside the box, you got uncomfortable. That was one. That was by design. When we invest in ourselves, our glow, our vision, our vibe, we all shine. Together, we are Black Beyond Measure. Speed transmission. Features available on GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause 
to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. When Ch- when Chadwick, um, people went off on him, his weight loss. Folks, oh my God, are you sick? And I, I came to his defense. I was like, y'all, y'all don't know if he's doing a movie role. You don't know if yeah, he's yeah. doing something. And um, he 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 asked me not w- when 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 it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't when he was alive. But this is what he said. As an artist and a human, I share my feelings with you, but in the public realm, I can't explain myself. That takes away from the art and the way of the artist. Mm. I would rather be misunderstood than go explaining away the reasons for my actions. Mm -hmm. You will see it on the screen. Yeah. There's just a certain code that you live by when you do this for real. People don't understand our craft or our way of life. Both things feed each other. Couldn't have been more well said. I I just, there's something about that's very disturbing. And I said it earlier, there's the way we look out for each other and the way we tear each other apart. Um, There is such a rush, and I'm sure you, I heard you went to see Dave the other night, like there's such a rush to find the guilt Mm -hmm. in people, to find the trash, the dirt, the the, you know what I mean? Like we we have to avoid this. We have to. If, you know, whether somebody's cheating on their wife or, you know, somebody, there's something suspicious going on. Dante Whitfield said that. He he, he just too good. We got to dirty him up. That's how people think. Really? Yeah. See, and, and, and that's the thing, like, you, you, we, we can't do that. We can't impose that on each other. We have to be willing to, to let each other breathe a little bit and find ourselves. Too often, I'll, I'll be the first to say this, too often a young kid, a kid will mess up in the music game or mess up in, in, uh, in, in the acting game and say the wrong thing. Right. Right? They'll say the wrong thing. And instead of being like, I'm gonna call this person. Right. I'm gonna pull them aside. Right. And I'm gonna teach them something about right. life. Right. Right? I'm just gonna like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm, now I'm gonna at, take advantage of this person's success and celebrity and post something about how whack they are. That, Especially That's when you know not, them. Yeah. Especially when you know even them. Even if you don't know yeah. them. Even, it, more, like I, I pull some cats aside some journalists, and I'm just like, have to do it. Yo, listen up. I remember, I remember uh, Yamis Alcindor, you now see her on yeah. uh, PBS, you see uh, Wesley Lowry. Uh, they, they were posting some tweets that I thought were very opinionated. Mm-hmm. But they were, they, they were objective journalists. I was like, yo, I need you to delete those. I said, like, I need y'all to understand something. I said, y'all young. Yeah. I said, yeah, they, were, they were in their mid 20s. Yeah. I said, Wesley, you with Boston Globe, New York Times, you won a Pulitzer Prize. I was Boston Globe, Washington Post. I said, you've already won two Pulitzer Prizes. I said, Yamish, you the New York Times, you, you're on MSNBC, go in here. I said, when you cross, the, when you go to that editorial line, yeah. you can't go back. Yeah. I said, when I became a columnist, I said, you don't, you, you, I said, you can sometimes do both. I said, but the reality is, you can't go back. I was right. like, delete that. I said, when it, when, I said, when it's time, 
yeah. then you can do it. I yeah. said, but I said, but don't knock yourself yeah. out of what you're doing right yeah. now. Yeah. Prematurely. I said, make it planned. For me, it was planned. Yeah. I planned my career that way. Right. And they were like, man, I really appreciate that. And I'm like, yo, that's why that's like like I, I, I that's why we are here. There were people who did that for me. There were yeah. people who were who were elders who I listened to, who I talked to, I ran stuff by, who were like, say, Ro, no, you ain't doing that. Now, if you choose to still do it, but they told you. Right. They gave you the advice. Right. They gave you the counsel, but it's still on you to whether you do it or not. Yeah. And that's what we, so we got, so we got to be able to do that. Yeah, we got, we just have to take a pause. Everything is not a, a something you need to pounce on. Right. And seize upon and make somebody feel bad for making a mistake, especially when they're young. If you're older, you know what I mean, you've grown, you know, I'm not saying, doesn't mean you ain't going through something. Let's be honest, you know, you and I both know, there's times when you're really going through something yeah. and you might make a mistake. Yeah. It's a mistake, no, unequivocally, you make a mistake. That's why I tell a lot of artists, I was like, yo, before you got there and comment on anything politically, call a brother. I'm like, this is what I do 24 seven. I do, bro, I've said, I said, look, I said, call me. If you don't know, I said, I give you the rundown. I could put you on the phone with the person. I said, but call me. I don't want you out there commenting on stuff. The amount of people that are uninformed about what's going on, you know, I, again, <laughs> when Afghanistan fell and my wife is from Afghanistan and people were just saying whatever they wanted to say without knowing the history of Afghanistan right. or anything, I remember being like, wow, there is so much. And Mark Lamont Hill talked about this. So, so much misinformation. There you go. And so many uninformed people speaking on this. Yep. And it's like, you know, just not knowing anything about American foreign policy or anything like anything. that. Anything. And it's just like the history of Pakistan and Afghanistan and any of that. People were just like, but this is the kind it's, of. It's just this way. No, it's this. Yeah, we're, we know we're, it. You're like, we're stuck in this. It's like, I'm sorry, you're now a foreign policy expert? Right. You, I, I thought I thought you were a love of hip hop. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Ex expert last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, that's what I'm saying. Like the the the, the platforms have made it so that people oh, feel like they can come. It's like even with COVID on everything. I mean, yeah. I've been battling people. I'm like, one first uh, was uh, me and Tank were going at it. He was like, oh, so you think you know? I said, one, I'm not a doctor, but I've had more than 100 COVID segments on my show in the past year with the preeminent black medical and scientific experts. So I think it's safe to say I've talked to more experts yeah. on this subject than you have. I've educated myself. I said, yeah. so, yeah. I think out of the both of us, yeah. yeah, I'm probably speaking for more. And I said, so everything is not, well, you gotta be this. No, 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 but this is the body of work. So right. would you like for me to get Dr. Ebony Hilton on the phone? Yeah, but even if and you're- And Tyson Bell? Even if you're an expert epidemiologist, Mm. Now people just don't want to believe that, right? Like people, like you could be well trained, well educated. And now they're like, well, I don't know about you. You like, yeah. You could be a specialist, and we've created so much doubt um, and misinformation. <laughs> these TikTok epidemiologists, these like, these these, yeah. these these YouTube uh, these YouTube infectious disease experts. Are you sitting I, there going, R really? I, th th this is what's so terrifying about this younger generation growing up. It's, it's information. With, it's true. With it's, all of these, you know, <laughs> information, misinformation. Right. right. These people who are misinforming. And then they say, do your own research, but if you don't even know where the hell to look. It's like, and again, just for me, it is, look, th this, is, this is what I do. I, I, I live yeah. in truth. So if I hear something, if, if somebody says, yo, man, Michael Ely was out here doing this, where'd you read that? Where'd you hear from? What's the story? Who's quoted? Sources familiar. And as a journalist, I know what yeah. all that means. Yeah. Someone familiar with his thinking. That's a lie. I mean, you could go through right. that because there are certain phrases that we use. Yeah. Okay? I can, I can read a story and go, yeah, this is a bullshit story. How it's written. Right. That's how I write. That's right. everything. Right. It was like when these, these memes went around, uh, Biden cutting $45 billion of HBCU funding to $2 billion. Let me call Congressman Bobby Scott, who sits on the House Education Labor Subcommittee. <laughs> Let me go. 
Let me go to the actual source. Let here. me call Leslie Baskerville, who's with Nafio, who yeah. lobbied for HBCUs. Let me call Thurgood Marshall Fund. Yeah. Let me call Michael Lomax with the UNCF. Yeah. Let me call Dr. Walter Kimbrough, who's at HBCU president of Dillard University. Dillard University. Head of all on the show. Yeah. So I'm like, oh man, you out here trying to defend Democrats. No, I'm sorry. I actually had the HBCU experts. Right. The very people who are the lobbyists and the beneficiaries yeah. of the very thing. Yeah. Say the very thing AP and Newsweek wrote about is not true. Yeah. So y'all can believe the Newsweek intern who wrote the story, mm -hmm. or you can believe the actual HBCU lobbyist right. who are helping craft a bill. Which, which one would you like to believe? That's where we are. And it's just, and, and, and it's crazy. That's it's where just, we are. It's, yeah. and, but my whole deal is we're going we gonna to keep dropping the truth, keep doing it. Uh, man, uh, appreciate sitting down. Absolutely. Uh, appreciate the lotion of the ankles. Um, <laughs> Nivea, baby. <laughs> y'all need a sponsor. You do, I'll tell, I'll yeah, tell you right Nivea, now. y'all need to. That's who y'all yeah. need to sponsor, y'all. Nivea. Seriously? This man got a trough of it upstairs. <laughs> there is like, there's like random bottles just sitting around the studio. Please give this man a sponsorship. I'm still laughing at your it son. Is, you tell your son, he like, son. I tell him every time. You, Son, you, you, this is cultural. Culturally, you are wrong for this. Like, you cannot do this. You have to put on lotion, but I know you're a boy. I get it. I was a boy. I didn't do dumb things, too. I'm here to tell you, man. you like, brother, I need, you need you This need right to, here is where I'm going to draw the line. you like, bro, like, brother, the, the Ain't no breathing room no, right so here. You got to say, Son, the ancestors. <laughs> Son, the ancestors. The ancestors you are must turning over in you their You to say, grave. son, you must do this for the elders and the ancestors. Yeah, one of these days I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, uh, 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 I would take a fingernail and write my name on a <laughs> shin, on a shin guard to show them how ash right, you get. I was like, this is the ash test. If I can do this, boom, and you can see that, the writing. There you go. That's the ash you say, test. You know you what? And, and then notion. you say, you gonna walk out the house with my name. See that? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah, we're, it's better than the bad haircut, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, that was bad. That was bad, a terrible phase. Bad haircut. Oh, last one. Tell these people when they put you in romantic comedy and let you comb your hair. <laughs> I'm watching I'm like, why? Because, you know, being, look. That's, I, that's me. That's me. Because I'm cause serious. That's me, Now, bro. that's also generic. Because let me tell you something. You know what the weirdest thing? Yeah. Growing up, brothers were like, Hair could not be like that Cleaner, is truly yeah. a new generation yeah, thing yeah, yeah. where it's just all over. Like you watch an NBA game, you like they don't, they don't, they don't comb their hair no more. They <laughs> comb their hair. You know, the brothers used to get the cut yeah. right before. Like yeah. cat, like oh yeah, I got a cut. Wait, what, where, where? Because it? it was all because yeah. it was it was yeah. just a thing where like yeah. even with the af the afro had to be properly shaped. Yeah, and molded. Yeah. I, I, I'd say it straight up. I wish I could say it was the producers. It was, <laughs> was me. Just, see, I can't even. Time. Like, seriously. Every time. I, there's me. no way I could rock that beard. Oh, what? Dude. I, I, it's, Michael. It's like, for me, I it's can't. so. It's, it's, it's so. I am. Okay, so I'll put like, on. That was the last question. I'm putting, but yeah. I'll, I'll put on. See, wait a minute, hold on. Yes, I, I seriously lotion. got. He said, up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's gonna go serious, right? I'm gonna break it down. When it comes to like lotion and stuff culturally, I bathe every day, I, you know, sometimes twice. I don't have that problem. But when it comes to my hair, I don't know what it is, um, I, unless I'm like playing a character who, right. you know, is that quaffed, right? Like if I do, right. you know, a certain character, like, oh, geez. I remember when I did Secrets and Lies, for example. I played a dude out of Charlotte, wore the Charlotte suits all the time, you know, the polo shirts, the whole nine, right. everything, right? Hair was always cut, immensely right. quaffed and stuff. My barber was through the moon off of that role <laughs> because he's a perfectionist. Right. He wants to get everything right. Every time he, I cut, I asked him just for a haircut, he's like this, what are we doing, man? What are we <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because he knows <laughs> yeah. it's going to be as And he like, so. He like, yo, it could be, I mean, it could just be so good if you just let me do he, he, this. He like the chef like, did you put some hot sauce on my food? It, 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 you it ain't is, even taste. What, can, can you? It, 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 is, it hurts him to his soul <laughs> that I want to leave my hair as natural as possible. Dude, I can't. And you understand, I can't you comb it. I <laughs> cannot. 
I cannot anything any hair. In here? Any hair. Dude, yeah. it's, I will only let, I will, if I shave yesterday, I'll let it today, but I will not go 48 hours. I, I can't. I just, right. I cannot. Right. Has to be trimmed. My, yeah. my dad, his bit doesn't grow through full, so he'll wear someone like that. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, no, I got to, I got to. Trim. My, my, it just, I can't. I just, I, like, I it just, was, it, it was has actually, to be. And then, hold on, and then the mustache? Yeah. Well, like, when I play his alpha? Got to be shaped. Dr. Alpha, he was shaped. like, he, he said, um, brothers, alphas, no, if the hair goes over Pass your lip. the lip. Now, he gave a grooming session. Right, right. He said, no. Yeah. Trim. Yeah. It, I am. I think for, for me, what had happened was early in my career, I was always, you know, forced and groomed and all of that stuff. You know what I mean? And, and when I'm not working, I try to be as natural as possible because it's just like, because, you know, like, you don't know if you need this for the next role. Gotcha. Right. Like if gotcha. I get a call tomorrow, say go and be on Walking Dead or something and you don't you can't look quaffed and stuff. Then now, they got to Then they, they got to add this. And, stuff. I ain't gonna look and that's little, really uncomfortable. Yeah, so yeah. nine times out of 10, it's better to look a little bit like this right. and they can clean you up if need be. Or rather than trying to be clean all the time. And then they got to make you look. A little bit raggedy. See, I couldn't be an actor. I you know what I'm saying? Doc, I, 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 yes, you could. Doc, I, yes, you could. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've been, been a great in, life. Well, I've been in some movies <laughs> yeah, and some TV shows. You understand? I, I, but I, yeah. I, it's that it, it would be hard for because I'm telling you, I, bro, yeah. the only the only time I do not when I will not trim or shave yeah. if I go on vacation, maybe the holidays, yeah, and like it go for a week, but. But you're probably like itching, like you're probably itching to come back and like. No, not really. It's okay. just it's okay. Cool. It's like just let go. Like for instance, I don't yeah. if I if I sh- if I shave on Thursday, and okay, like a weekend coming up, and I'm going nowhere. I'm in the crib. Yeah. I want to do it till Monday, but Monday morning. Yeah. Zzz. Yeah. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we are about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. A lot of stuff that we're not getting, you get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to PO Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zell is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. But you know, look, man, you you and I have talked about this. You you one of the cleanest <laughs> brothers I've ever met. You know what I'm saying? Like the ascot, it's it's always uh, a topic of conversation uh, between I can't rock an ascot. I think you could. Right? I yeah, don't I think th- I could. Yeah, I think you could. It's all, right. all it's all it's all do, do you have a walk? Yes. That's where it starts. It's all about I'm telling you, it's all, it's all I thought the same thing. I'm not lying. Yeah. I was in a store. I saw, I was like, man, no, nah, I, I, I can't. I was, it, was, it was 13 years ago. Okay. I was like, yeah, I can't do that. So I'm shopping. I go to the other side of the store. I'm about to check out. 
It's a mannequin. Yeah. Black jacket, cream shirt. Okay. Black polka dot ascot. Okay. Pocket square. I was like, shit, that's clean. Right. Went over, took it off the mannequin. I said, I'm going to buy this one. Okay. Okay. Wore it to my 41st, had a little dinner party, my 41st birthday. Yeah. Clean. Okay. Folks were like, damn. Right. I was like, all right. I'll I got so I got so something. I, I here. went back. I got something here. I got Bought something here. Two more. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, because yeah. the reaction was, well, nobody else rocking it. Yeah. I bought like ten. Right. And then when I started rocking, folks were like, yo. Yeah. Then it turned into a thing. Yeah. Where if I didn't, exactly, folks yeah. were like, that's what I felt like today. I felt like you you let me down. Dog, what? I gave a speech. <laughs> How, I gave a business, it was a business conference, yeah, yeah. Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Wow, okay. We okay. ain't even United States. Right. Business conference. Put on the blue suit, strong tie, pocket square. I walk in, they were like. Yeah, you're synonymous with they the went, ascot now. D- yeah. Dude, wh- wh- yeah. where the ascot? Yeah. I was like, what are y'all, I was like, y'all see, they're like, yeah, we've heard these bits in the Times on the morning show. We've seen. Uh, <laughs> What's up? Yeah. They, were, they had an attitude. Yeah. I spoke at other places. They're like, what is going on? Mm. So then so I, I, so then when I started wearing a lot of different African outfits, yeah. folks hot, they're like, say, no, what's up with this African formal? <laughs> what, what? I was like, are y'all serious? Yeah. 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 And, and I didn't realize that thing until I interviewed Frankie Beverly. Frankie, you know, Frankie's whole thing is white. Yeah. I said, Frank, where'd that come from? He said, he said that wasn't planned. He said, I was on stage, I wore white at a couple of concerts. He said, the next concert I had on black and red, and I'm like, hey man, yeah. what a white. Yeah. And he said, it, he said, it just became a thing, mm-hmm. and it just took off, and he's worn white, and not the whole band wear white. Yeah. That's how it is. So people, people will literally like, dude. Yeah. And like, I wanted a photo with you and the ascot. I was like, well, I well, I wanted to wear. I ain't gonna go that hard. You know no, that, no. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean some women like uh, you, you bigger than your ass guy. You know what I mean? Right. I was kind of like y'all. It's like I'm a just, part of you. It's like we were talking about. It's a part of me. No, it's a part of the spectrum. I've asked people like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you ain't rolling. You can't be rolling. Right. You know, like, I ain't recognize your ass. Yeah. And then of course not him with the feather pocket square. Now that's a whole. Yeah. That's a whole other. Like the the pocket square and the ascot, I mean, to not have either is it is a bit not rolling, Martin. I am butt naked <laughs> if I don't pocket square. If I no no no, bro, do you do you understand how I am? I am not lying. Yeah. If I do not have a pocket, if I got a jacket on yeah. and I somehow left my pocket square, I am butt naked. I right. do. I I I'm pissed. Right. Cause it ain't all together. It's right. just it. You know, I, it all got to. You know, yeah. and, it, and it's weird because my, my dad worked for Amtrak. Yeah. And I think a part of the problem, I would watch my dad, he'd be in the living room and all of a sudden he in the bathroom, he getting washed up, cleaned up, he get dressed. I'm like, where his ass going? He would come back with the groceries. I'm like, his ass got, my dad would, Mine too. would get clean. I never saw my dad in jeans. Now my dad wore jeans. Till he was like 70. He wears jeans. <laughs> I hate jeans. Yeah. If you ever see me in jeans, it's 100% guaranteed I'll have cowboy boots on. Okay. That's the only way you will ever see me in jeans. And you will I, never catch me in cowboy boots. Oh, oh, I got, I got uh, my 20 pair. <laughs> see, that's the other thing. I hit them with the ascot, the cowboy boots, there's the a African full, outfits. They don't even know what I'm a, coming there's with. The full spectrum to the, roll the, Dude, I got four I get closets. It. How many closets you got? I, I don't have, I have one closet. Oh, hell no. I, yeah. And I can, I can park at the back of the parking lot and walk, too. I got four closets. I can, <laughs> You know is that how you, in four different houses or is that in one no, house? No, in one house, four classes. Okay. We, you know how you go, you go, you know, get to go shopping for a new house? I and they show I the wife. They, they show, That's you. <laughs> they show the wife the kitchen, but I cook. I'm like, yeah. what the hell y'all show her the kitchen for? Yeah. I cook. Then I was like, well, let me show you the closets. She's like, no, y'all need to show him the closets. Right. Yeah, right. I, I, I got a, I got a whole. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I am, I'm not a clothes person. I'm not a, yeah, like, I, a. I'm not a, 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 a grooming person. I'm not, I'm not. And, and, and honestly, this is, you know, my father has passed and, you mm-hmm. know, so it's, it's, he was that. 
my father was the epitome of clean. Yeah. Now he a military man, so he he believed in making your bed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Your shirt was always tucked in. Clean. Pants was pressed. Boom. You know what I mean? Crease. Old school starch. Crease, everything. Shh. I went the opposite direction. Dog, I, 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 I get out, I look like a friggin' like. My you dad, know, my dad dressed. He still dresses. So I took it higher. Okay. I took it. My one of the greatest. This last story, because you gotta go. Yeah. This, I, this is one of the greatest <laughs> you gotta go. moments of my life. Okay. Greatest of my mind. Buying my dad a suit, a whole, a whole thing for uh, his for Father's Day. Okay. But Michael, we in the store. Laid a suit out on the table, and I'm going. Bring me that shirt. Put the tie together. No. Pocket square. I'm putting yeah. all cufflinks. I'm putting. And so yeah. my dad is standing there. Yeah. So it's role reversal. Yeah. And he did with me and my brother. Yeah. We didn't pick shit. Got it. He was like, stand your ass right there. Right. He did that. Right. Shoes, socks. And I'm sitting there and I'm going, go give me that tie off of that mannequin. Oh, sir, it's not going to match. I didn't ask for your opinion. <laughs> Just asked you to go this get it. This is the dude who worked there. I was yeah. like, yeah. I don't need your help. Right. Your job is to go get what I need or take back what I don't want. Yeah. Go get that tie. Yeah. He brings it. I put it together. I said, come here. Do you see how this tie pull that pin straight out of the suit? That's why you need to pay attention. So I put the whole, I put the whole thing together. And my, and the look on my dad's face was like, just proud. Yeah. Like, yeah. I raised his ass right. Yeah. Yeah. And then, no, it's, and then it's of course, a- I was paying for the whole outfit. Right. That's even better. That's even better. No, I get it. I get it. I ain't put on a suit in years because of COVID, but it's like, uh, you know, the red carpet thing. I'm like you are about like valet parking. I'm like, ah, oh, just get it. Just put it on. Oh, my God. Well, please. when we, when we use when we use it up here, please. When, Thank when, you. when we, you need uh, if your son gets too out of control and you need that moment where he needs to be taken through the suit game and the lotion game. You got my number. I'm going to call you. And I will sit here and say, Young Ely, take a seat. Come here, let me show you. (laughs) (laughs) You said we got to have each other's back. We got to have each other's back, back. man. No, I appreciate it. I have it. I appreciate it, man. And you need me whoop that ass? Yeah. (laughs) I'm available. I'm telling you, he straightened up. I changed my tone. He straightened up. We good for now. We good. We good for now. All right, baby. Appreciate, Appreciate it. you, man. Appreciate <laughs> you, baby. Go get this photo, Anthony. When we invest in ourselves, we're investing in what's next for all of us. Growing. Creating. Making moves. The move us all forward. Together, we are black beyond measure. You had me at Allison 10 speed transmission. Features available on GMC Sierra Heavy Duty. Premium and capable. That's professional grade from GMC. When we invest in ourselves, we all shine. Together, we are black beyond measure. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 